Hey, what is up guys? In this video, I will give you a high level review on 14 different online stock brokers and ultimately rank them based on my personal experience as well as my online research. Before we begin, help me smack the like button down below. It will help me out immensely. Thank you very much. And with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into today's content. Firstly, let's take a look at TD Ameritrade. Incorporated in 1978, they are arguably one of the most established brokers in the world. Back in year 2020, they have been acquired by Charles Schwab, a giant bank in the United States, which gives them better security as well as better platform integration. They have two headquarters, one in the US and another one in Singapore, which mainly caters to non-US investors. And as such, they are regulated by the FINRA of the United States as well as the MAS of Singapore. And on top of that, investor securities are further insured by the SIPC or the Securities Investors Protection Corporation. In terms of custodian or clearing firm, basically the person that holds the assets and cash, TD Ameritrade does it themselves. In terms of brokerage fee, they offer zero commission trading. However, they only offer trading in the US market only. So if you are keen to invest in say Singapore, Hong Kong or China market or just any island domicile funds, then this could potentially be a problem for you. For funding currency, they only accept US dollars and SING dollar if only you have DBS or POSB Singapore bank account. But if you are like the rest of us, then we can only fund it via foreign telegram transfer which will cost a lot. Platform wise, TD Ameritrade offers a huge array of tools so this is an easy 5 points to them. However, there will be a learning curve for most beginner or casual investors. So in terms of user friendliness, I will give it a 2 over 5. Customer service wise, I personally went through a nightmare to open my account with them. Plus their email reply is really really slow. Then again, this might differ from person to person so take this with a pinch of salt. The pros of TD Ameritrade will be its establishment being one of the old oldest broker plus it offers a really phenomenal platform for trading in the US market. However, the cons of TD Ameritrade will be its slow account opening process which can take up to 5 months and on top of that, very limited funding options plus it offers US market only. Next, we look at Interactive Brokers or IBKR in short which is another well-established broker incorporated since 1977. IBKR is listed on the US Nasdaq market and also governed by regulators from US, Singapore, UK, Australia, Hong Kong, and Canada. Similar to TD Ameritrade, IBKR is also further insured by the SIPC, plus it clears and holds the assets within its group, while also providing custodian service to brokers like Tiger Brokers and Trading212. In terms of brokerage fee, they charge a minimum of 35 cents per trade, but this is as good as free since they have a really good order execution quality. And if you want to learn more about order execution quality, I will link it up to my previous video on the top right hand corner. Next, for the stock markets offered, IBKR is undisputably the champion as it offers more than 135 financial markets. So hands down, it is the most flexible broker in this video. Which also leads me to my next point where they support 23 incoming currencies. So more cost saving and less hassle for you. In terms of platform tools, they offer trading services on mobile devices, web portal as well as trading software. But then again, not the easiest for beginners to learn. But if you are interested to learn how to use interactive brokers platform, feel free to check out my previous video where I covered the Interactive Brokers mobile app. In terms of their customer service, I learned from people that their live support may take up to 2 hours to connect and they are not the most responsive on emails so I will give it a 2 here. The pros of IBKR will be its establishment, flexible funding options, fractional shares trading with more than 135 financial markets plus the best order execution quality. But its largest drawback will be its monthly inactivity fee. Basically, you need to pay like $10 or less depending on the commission fees that you pay that month. So if you have traded $4 that month, then effectively you need to pay $6 of inactivity fee. Moving on, we look at TradeStation Global, which is an introducing broker to IBKR. Basically, they are exactly the same as IBKR since you rely on their platform and security. But with without the inactivity fee of IBKR. Now since they are introducing broker to IBKR, all your assets and stocks will be held under IBKR. I have previously made an entire video dedicated to TradeStation Global so I will link it up on the top right hand corner for you. TSG offers a fairly modest brokerage fee of $1.50 per trade and just like IBKR, they also offer 135 financial markets and supports 23 incoming currencies. Platform wise, they share the same platform as interactive brokers. In terms of customer service, hands down they are the best in this list. All of my email queries were replied within 24 hours plus my account was completed within 2 weeks. For its pros, it's almost identical to interactive brokers but sadly no fractional shares trading. 
plus you don't need to pay any inactivity fee. The only downside here is that they require an initial funding of 1000 US dollars. Not a really huge deal but just for your information. Next we look at First Trade, a US based broker established since 1985 and later on rebranded into First Trade Securities in 1997. They are not public listed and there is very limited information on their founder and CEO John Liu. I looked up John's LinkedIn, there is practically no info on him. So I googled him and the only thing that I can find is that John has previously worked for US brokerage Merrill Lynch which is now a subsidiary of Bank of America. The point I want to bring up here is there is very little information on the owner and shareholder of First Trade but so far there are no reports of fraud or whatsoever so this is up for you to decide whether it is legit or not. That said, they are only regulated in the US plus they are also further insured by SIPC. Their clearing firm is Apex Clearing Corporation which is the same for Webu just so you know. Similar to TD Ameritrade, they also offer zero commission trading and offer US market only and no surprise they only accept funding in US dollar. In terms of platform tools they offer both mobile and desktop platforms but from online reviews we can see that some really enjoy that platform but there are also reviews that says their customer service is literally non-existent. Not very uncommon for a lot of brokers out there but this just really depends on luck sometimes. So to sum it up first trade is literally the lesser version of TD Ameritrade so there is no reason for me not to choose TD Ameritrade instead. Moving on let's take a look at Trading212, easily one of the most popular broker in the UK. Ask any UK investors there and high chance they are currently using Trading212 or have used Trading212 before. It is not a public listed company but it is licensed and regulated both in the UK and Bulgaria. As such, investors are protected under the FSCS of UK and Investors Compensation Fund of Bulgaria. In terms of brokerage fee, they offer zero commission trading with the ability to trade fractional shares over six different stock markets, the US, UK, Germany, France, Spain and Netherlands. In terms of funding currency, you can fund it via US dollar, Great Britain pound or Euro. Its desktop and mobile app platform is really slick and well equipped. Not the most complicated to use but it gets the job done for most of the retail investors. So 5 points for both of them. In terms of its customer service, some reviews on Reddit show that there is literally no customer service while there are also some that says their mobile support is good. So just take them with a pinch of salt. They are most probably EU or US clients so it might be better off or worse off for us from non-EU countries. So to summarize Trading212, their main selling point will be its fractional shares trading plus they have a huge user base in the UK. But they offers a very limited funding currency. Next, we look at Saxo Bank, also one of the oldest brokerage firm whom also runs a bank in Denmark. Saxo Bank is not a public listed entity, but it is a majority owned subsidiary of Zhejiang Jili Holding Group, whom is a Chinese automotive giant. Yeah pretty weird right? That said, the acquisition does allow Saxo Bank to have much better access to the Chinese market and regulators just in case you are into the Chinese market. In terms of regulatory, it is licensed and regulated in Singapore, Hong Kong, Denmark, Australia and many other EU countries. For insurance, it depends on which country you are from so here is a list of its coverage. Saxo Bank acts as a custodian and clearing firm for itself as well as providing such services to banks and financial institutions just like stash away. Its brokerage fee varies according to the different tiers of account, with the cheapest one charging a minimum of 3 US dollars per trade. They offer 36 exchanges which covers most of the financial markets that you can ever ask for. They are pretty flexible in terms of funding currencies, being able to accept US dollar, Sing dollar, Malaysian ringgit and many more major currencies. In terms of platform tools, since they are mainly built for advanced traders, it will be very nice for professional traders but in return, a nightmare for casual investors. For its customer service, I can't really vouch it personally but since they are offering various packages that promises at least 24 hours of support on weekdays, so I suppose their service should be above average. So to sum it up, the pros of Saxo Bank will be its order execution quality and customer support since they mainly cater to professional and institutional traders. While its largest cons will be its minimum fund funding requirement, a whopping 10,000 US dollars, not very feasible for most retail investors. Moving on, we have Tastyworks, only recently operational since 2017. What makes them special is because their higher management were the co-founders of Think or Swim, the current trading platform run by TD Ameritrade, so expect a lot of similarity here. In terms of regulatory, Tastyworks is regulated in the US only and is also further insured by the SIPC. Its clearing firm is none other than Apex Clearing Corporation one of the largest clearing firm in the US. Similar to TD Ameritrade, it offers zero commission trading and offers US market only 
Plus, it only accepts funding in US dollar. For the platform tools, expect a lot of similarity to TD Ameritrade, which is robust but not beginner friendly at all. For its customer service, BrokerChooser.com gave them a score of 4.0. General support is great, but there's no live chat or 24 7 support. For non US residents, since the phone bill will cost a bomb, your only means to contact will be through email only. So just keep that in mind. So apart from being almost identical to TD Ameritrade, its main appeal is actually its options trading price. They even compared themselves against 5 other brokerage firms and ranked themselves the cheapest in terms of options trading. And for the cons, as you can guess already, it's a pretty young fintech with limited credibility. So unless you are an option trader, I don't see why not TD Ameritrade. Moving on, we have Tiger Brokers, one of the hottest brokers in the scene right now due to its heavy advertisement. Founded in 2014, Tiger Brokers is a subsidiary of Up Fintech Holdings Limited, who is a listed entity on the US Nasdaq market. Up Fintech Holding is a Chinese company in nature, with over 78% of its shareholding owned by a Chinese individual named Tianhua, while Xiaomi have a really minute stake of about 3% only. So just how credible are Chinese companies? Warning, what I'm about to say might trigger you, but please hear me out. Historically, there have been quite a few accounting fraud charges placed on Chinese companies. Case in point, Luckin Coffee, and many other more Chinese companies because traditionally, they do not follow the standard US accounting reporting guidelines, hence why the threat of delisting from the US market. So long story short, I have nothing against Chinese companies, I'm not racist, obviously, but there are some inherent risks when you're entrusting your hard-earned money with Chinese companies. I hope you're aware of that. They're regulated and licensed in the US, Singapore, Australia, and New Zealand, as well as being further insured by the SIPC. What I really want to highlight here is that Interactive Brokers is the custodian for their US securities. So that is a plus point, but it does not completely remove the risk of fraud within the company itself. Its brokerage fee is fairly low, pricing just at $1.99 per trade for US stocks, while offering several financial markets such as US, Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, and China. In terms of funding currency, you can deposit US dollar, Sing dollar, or Hong Kong dollar. For its platform, it's pretty robust and have most of the things you need, but in return, beginners will have a small learning curve. In terms of their customer support though, they have mixed reviews on Sidley forum, but mostly are on the less pleasant side. These comments are pretty recent actually, so just head over to Sidley forums and have a read yourself. Overall, the Sidley community gave it a score of 3.7 from the 62 reviews that they have received. So believe it or not, those are the reviews from the Singaporean community. So to sum it up, the main attraction point for Tiger Brokers will be its fast account opening process as well as its flexible funding currencies if you are from Malaysia or Singapore. But the main drawback, as discussed earlier, it is a pretty young fintech and to make things worse, it is a Chinese-owned company. The next broker we have here is also a very highly advertised Chinese broker, Futu Momo. What a name, right? Incorporated since 2018 and only recently started its operation in the Asian market. Futumumu is a subsidiary of Futu Holdings, whom is a listed entity on the US Nasdaq market. It is regulated and licensed in both US and Singapore, as well as being further insured by the SIPC. There are no information of their custodian or clearing firm, which led me to believe that they are doing them in-house. Their brokerage fee is similar to Tiger Brokers, $1.99 minimum per trade, and they also offer the popular US Singapore and Hong Kong market as well. And in terms of funding, you can do it with US dollar, Sing dollar, or Hong Kong dollar. For its platform tools, I can't really comment much on this, but from my online research, it does seem to have a fairly high degree of similarity to Tiger Brokers and Weibo. Its pros and cons is similar to Tiger Brokers, but just keep that in mind, it does not have interactive brokers as their custodian. Next, we have Weibo, easily one of the most popular broker in the United States, which is also highly advertised in the YouTube space. Incorporated since 2017, Weibo is a privately owned company and if you don't know already, Weibo is also a Chinese owned company. On paper, it does put Weibo on the same level as Tiger Brokers and Futumomo. I can't deny that. But one fact stood out is that it has a very large user base in the United States. So that just gives a little bit of extra comfort in terms of its financial help. Regulatory wise, they are only regulated in the US and they are also further insured by SIPC 
plus additional insurance policy purchased by its clearing firm, Apex Clearing Corporation. Similar to TD Ameritrade, it offers zero commission trading, offers US market only, and accepts US dollar only. In terms of its platform tools, I can personally watch that its platform is easily on par with TD Ameritrade or interactive brokers. Just download the free desktop software and try it for yourself, I'm sure you will like it. But in terms of user friendliness, there is a little bit of learning curve, so I will give it 3 points. So to sum up Weibo, its main selling point will be its zero commission trading, plus its intuitive platform which is really really nice to use. Its major drawback, as you can guess already, it offers US market only, plus it is a young Chinese fintech. Some words just doesn't go well together, right? The next broker that we have here is the Raging Green Bull that will soon be listed on the Nasdaq market. E Toro. Regulatory wise, the Israeli fintech is regulated in UK, EU, and Australia. Investors are protected by the FSCS of UK, ICF of Cyprus, as well as additional insurance policy by Lloyd London. It does not, however, disclose its custodian or clearing firm, so they most probably do it in house. Brokerage fee wise, they offer zero commission trading, and on top of that, they very sexy and beautiful fractional shares trading. They cover US, UK, EU. Australia and Canada but they have a very very limited coverage of ETFs so just keep that in mind. In terms of funding currencies you can fund it with 15 different currencies and you can also do it via credit card or PayPal something that other brokers don't offer. Platform wise they are geared towards beginner or casual investors with very limited platform tools and articles which to be honest any Tom Dick and Harry can write on it. However they do come with a pretty unique copy trading feature if that's what you are into. So all in all it is a very user friendly platform for most of the retail investors out there. In terms of customer service however, my online research shows that their customer support is pretty bad. It might vary from person to person so just take this with a pinch of salt. So summing up eToro its pros will be its fractional shares trading as well as its unique copy trading feature which is pretty well received by casual investors. Its main drawback however would be its technical issues. Back when GameStop was short squeezing in early 2021, eToro's platform failed to follow the actual market price. That to me is one of the largest red flags for any brokers if you can't even get the basics right. You might think I'm biased but just take a look at all these online communities comments, their upwards and replies should speak for itself. And if you still don't believe me, there are also tons of articles stating that eToro failed when the market turned volatile. Their second cons will be their mail accounts. For example, if you want to withdraw money from eToro, you would not receive funds from eToro themselves. Instead, you will receive from weird names such as Lee Barbers or Tan Grocers. This might not be an issue right now, but if one day Touchwood the tax authority audits you and requests for transaction slips, then you might get into trouble. So just keep that in mind if you are currently investing or thinking to invest with eToro. And last but not least, its third drawback as mentioned earlier would be its limited ETF offerings. I'll just quickly run through the remaining brokers because they are not as popular among the community. We have FSM1 Singapore which is a subsidiary of IFAS Corporation Limited which is listed on the Singapore exchange. They are only regulated in Singapore and they offer a minimum brokerage fee of $8.80 per trade. In terms of stock market, they cover US, Singapore, Singapore and Hong Kong, but what appeals the most to investors is its global coverage of unit trust and mutual funds. You can only find it in Sing Dollar, and I give their platform a score of 4 for being really useful and informative. 3 points for user friendliness because just like any other broker, it takes a little bit of learning to get used to. Customer service wise, they have a score of 4.4 on Sidley and an overall score of 4.3. So not bad after all. Its pros as mentioned earlier would be its variety of global funds offerings and they have a physical branch in Singapore for that extra tiny bit of sense of security. Its main drawback as you can guess already would be its steep brokerage fee. Moving on we look at Poems, short form for Philips Online Electronic Mart System. Poems is a privately owned company but it is easily one of the oldest broker in Singapore. Ask any seasoned Singaporean investor and they will know Poems for sure. Their brokerage fee currently stands at a minimum of $3.88 per trade but be careful because that only lasts until 31st December 2021 after which they may revert back to their original rates which is about $10.88 per trade for US stocks 
which is pretty expensive. And on top of their brokerage fee, they also come with an account maintenance fee of 16 sing dollar every three months, unless you trade at least one time in that period. And to make things worse, they also charge you custody fee on foreign shares. Basically means you need to pay two sing dollar every month unless you trade a certain amount in that month or quarter. They cover quite a lot of financial markets such as US, UK, Singapore, Malaysia, China and many other more. And with that, you can find it via US dollar, Sing dollar, Malaysian ringgit and many more currencies. Its platform is more on the legacy side but it gets the job done for most of the seasoned investors. It scores 4.1 on Sidley for its customer service and have an overall score of 4.0 from 166 reviews. Not bad after all. To sum it up, Poems have physical branches in Singapore and is also one of the oldest brokerage firm in Singapore. But its major drawback would be its brokerage fee, custodian fee as well as maintenance fees. Last but not least, not exactly exactly a broker but we have our local banks offering global trading platform. They are probably the ones with the highest security among the brokers here because they are a bank in nature and regulated by the local government. But with that, it comes with a very hefty price tag of around 25 US dollars per trade. So it makes no economical sense if you are looking to dollar cost average every month or bi-monthly. They usually offer a wide variety of financial markets and their funding options will be very flexible since they can accept local currency. But just bear in mind the conversion will be done at the local bank's mercy. So it means that you will be losing quite a bit with currency conversion. Their platforms are usually out of date and can't compete with that of a fintech but they do come with a customer service representative which can then attend to your personal issues or queries. Its largest pros will be its physical branch presence and the high security of a bank but its major drawback would be its outrageously expensive brokerage fee plus conversion losses. So having compared the 14 brokers, I will now rank them according to this 5 tier pyramid with tier 1 being the best at the top and tier 5 being the worst at the bottom. Let's start with TD Ameritrade Singapore. They are highly established and they offer the most robust trading platform. Although they only offers US market, it deserves a spot to be in the tier 1 broker. Followed by interactive brokers, highly established, robust trading platform, flexible funding options, more than 135 financial markets, what else can we ask for? It is a no-brainer for being a tier 1 broker. Then we have TradeStation Global. Since it uses the credentials and platform of interactive brokers without its inactivity fee, it offers a fairly low brokerage fee on top of the phenomenal customer support. I would gladly put it into tier 1 as well. Now we have First Trade, US market only, fairly old broker with a fairly decent track record and not much of hate on it. But because it is really hard to verify the shareholder or CEO of the company, I would put it in tier 3. Next up, we have Trading212, easily the most popular platform in the UK, plus it offers fractional shares trading. Almost perfect, but since it only accepts US dollar, Great Britain pound, and Euro, it might not be the cheapest option for Asian clients like me, so I will put it in tier 2. Then we have Saxo Bank, also near perfect. I would say it appeals more to professional traders since it has a really steep minimum funding of 10,000 US dollars, but it does not execute better than interactive brokers, so I don't see the reason why retail traders should go for Saxo as opposed to interactive brokers, so I will put Saxo in tier 2 as well. Moving on, we have Tastyworks, the almost identical twins of TD Ameritrade. But since it is still a young fintech and offers US market only, I would have to put it in tier 3. Next up, we have Tiger Brokers. I know this is a very popular broker in the finance community right now, but personally, I can't get over the fact that it is a young fintech that is majority owned by a single Chinese individual. I initially wanted to put it in the bottom tier, but since its US stocks are held with interactive brokers, I would give it a tier 4 ranking. For Futumumu, this is almost identical to Tiger Brokers but since it does not have its shareholder by an established custodian i.e. IBKR, I would have to put it under tier 5. For Weibull, also very similar case as Tiger and Futumumu as well but the fact that it has a really huge user base in the US does give a little bit of extra comfort so I will put it into tier 4. Now we have eToro, also a very popular platform but with all the technical issues and mule accounts, it does feel like it can't get the basics right yet. But for now, I will put it into tier 5. Hopefully, they will get things sorted out when they are public listed later. Moving on to FSM1 Singapore, not the cheapest nor the most expensive option. But 
since it has physical branches. Great features overall. I think it deserves a spot in tier 3 rank. Next up is Holmes, old brokerage firm, not the cheapest plus a ton of maintenance and custodian fees. I think it would be the least attractive option for recommendation here. So tier 5 is the place to go. Lastly, local banks. Literally the only reason why you should invest via a local bank is because you think that online brokers might disappear one day alongside all your hard earned money. Don't get me wrong though, that is a valid reason but for now, it doesn't offer anything unique at all. So tier 5 for them. So there you go, 14 brokers rank in 5 tiers. Hopefully this will give you better clarity on which foreign brokerage account you should go for or at the very least, help your research in this wondrous world of stock brokerage. If this video helped you out, help me smack the like button down below, subscribe if you haven't already and that will mean the world to me. Thank you very much. Also, if you don't mind, help me share this video out so that your friends and family can invest with the right online broker. Let me know in the comment section which online broker you are using right now. Share your experience so far and I'm sure the community will appreciate it. Full disclaimer, all the opinion in this video are based on my personal experience as well as online findings only. I am not sponsored by anyone to say this and I have nothing against those brokers mentioned earlier. Know that any online brokers will have their inherent risk. The best we can do as a retail investor is to do our research identify the risk and go for the one with the lowest risk. After all, we are in this for the long term, so don't be blindsided by short-term benefits such as sign-up bonus or referral bonuses. Instead, aim for long-term security, at least for your primary brokerage account. I know this video is a long one, but if you have stayed until this point, thank you very much for your time. That's it, stay safe, stay invested, and as usual, I will see you in the next one.